Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be discussing the incredible new pieces of information that we just got from the Pokemon company this morning on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus. And as I'm sure you are all just as excited as I am to also hear that we have new footage for these videos and we no longer have to look at the same footage every single time that we've been looking at since February. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the video. We have been looking forward to this Pokemon Presents for months now. It has been five or six months since we've gotten any new information on Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus, and they did not disappoint. We're going to start with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and then we'll move into Legends Arceus because there is a lot to discuss. We're going to have more in-depth, specific, speculative videos coming out in the next couple weeks on everything we saw from this trailer, and what I presume will be more trailers moving forward. When comes to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we saw a lot, and I want to get the fluff from the top right out of the way. These are not one-for-one -one remakes. Even though it's taking place in the Sinnoh region, and even though they have tried to recreate the art style of the original games in a new chibi form, there are brand new features to these games that weren't in the originals. Specifically in this trailer, we saw that Pokemon will follow behind the trainer in the overworld, and you're going to have full character customization of your player character in this game. Not only are you going to get to change the clothing that Dawn or Lucas wears, but you're also going to be able to change the skin color and the hair color starting right out. These are changes that Pokemon just didn't have back in the DS era. This was not an extensive feature until X and Y. So they are really giving us these modern amenities in the remix, which is great to see. The other new thing that we saw that wasn't in the originals were underground dens where you can catch different Pokemon that you couldn't normally catch that early in the Sinnoh region. These dens are going to be changed and randomized depending on what types of statues you put into your secret base underground. This is all part of the grand underground in the Sinnoh region. They released a map that's just specifically showing us the underground locations, and these tunnels and different pathways stretch across the entire Sinnoh region. So this is a feature added on to an already existing BDSP, not BDSP, Diamond and Pearl feature that we did not previously know about. I'll hit some of the aesthetic changes as well. The overworld looks better. It looks a lot more detailed. It is still the chibi art style. And listen, I have said from the beginning, I've done videos talking about this topic. The chibi art style in and of itself, I am not the biggest fan of. I wasn't the biggest fan of it when they did it for Zelda Link's Awakening, and I'm not the biggest fan of it here. But as I said, even in those videos, the backgrounds and the 3D environments that these character models are in, I have always liked. And I think that there is an incredibly, incredible amount of polish on these models and on this overworld that we did not previously see. In some of the trailers, you can see that there are probably HMs of some sort still in the overworld. So this is a change that is not going to be made modern. It's going to still exist from what they were in the original games. But as a whole, the overworld looks gorgeous. The lighting looks fantastic. The regions and different parts of the Sinnoh, of, of Sinnoh itself look incredibly vibrant, vibrant and incredibly varied. This is an incredible presentation of the Sinnoh region. They gave us a map of Sinnoh itself, an updated map showing us the region. It's all the same locations that we've seen in previous games, but there are a couple things to point out. We're going to be doing some map analysis videos probably in the future as well, so be sure to get excited for that. Super Contests are back. They were rebranded Super Contests in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and that change is returning. It does appear that they're going to be using a very similar format to what they were in those games, but it's contests. It's never been my cup of tea, but for people who do like being a coordinator, that is also going to make its return in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. We also saw more Pokemon. There were Pokemon in this game, in the, show, in the gameplay footage that we saw, that were Platinum. So we know for pretty much a fact that we are at least seeing the Platinum Pokedex. We've seen this in some of the Pokemon that you saw in the Sinnoh Underground in some of these caverns. They were exclusive to Sinnoh. We've, we've basically got confirmation that they are using the proper Sinnoh Pokedex in this game, which is fantastic to see. We also saw that Pokemon are going to be following you, as I mentioned previously, and it appears that they are going to be everywhere. Now, we're not sure if this means Pokemon are going to be in the grass. We're also not sure if this is all 493 Pokemon up to the end of the Sinodex. Is it just the Sinodex? 
or are we getting Pokemon after 493? None of that has been confirmed. None of that has been denied, though. We are seeing Pokemon up to the Sinnoh region. We've seen Pokemon like Sentret, which I'm not sure if they were in the original Sinnoh regional decks, but we could see them in the underground. That might tell us that up to 493, there's going to be national deck support. And we already know from the trailer that there's going to be home support. So you'd have to imagine, I think at this point, without knowing any other information, the most likely scenario is that we are getting one to 493. So every single Pokemon from Kanto, from Johto, from Hoenn and Sinnoh, we are not going to be seeing Unova and Up Pokemon. Unfortunately, it appears that it is just a remake in that sense. But ultimately, I am a big fan of everything that we've seen. We know that Manaphy is going to be a special pre-order bonus, so if you get the game before February of 2022 and you use the mystery gift feature, you're going to be able to get a Manaphy egg, and once that hatches, you can breed it in the daycare to get a Fiona as well. There's a lot of really good things that we saw in this trailer. We saw the gym leaders in action. We saw wild Pokemon battles. We saw that the battle animations look vastly improved from the original games. I noticed this in one of my comments from one of my previous videos. Listen, I understand that there are people who are going to say they're just adding things that we've already seen in older Pokemon games. Following Pokemon has been in Pokemon games by now. All of these, a trainer customization has been in Pokemon games by now. I agree with that. I'm not saying that they're breaking any new ground here, but this is more of a remake with other additions from other Pokemon games, quality of life features that I think we should be excited about. And I'm excited about it. I was already pretty amped about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but this just adds on to it on a whole nother level. And I am, I'm very excited about what we've seen here and hopefully we're gonna see more moving forwards. Now, before we move any further, I just wanna mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them and who are hopefully excited for this new Pokemon information are not yet subscribed to the channel. Now, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time. Be sure to look down below this video and turn that red button into whatever other color it is now on YouTube because I'm not fully aware of what it becomes afterwards. But if you're not subscribed, be sure to fix that so you never miss an upload. Later on in the Presents, and I have a whole video reacting to this Pokemon Presents, if you have not seen it already, there'll be a card up in the corner. You can go check that out right now. It was our live reactions, me and some of my friends, seeing this Pokemon Presents for the first time. We got Legends Arceus footage, and we got more information and more of a blowout than I think I expected. It was more of the trailer than Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I expected the opposite. I expected that they would highlight mostly the game that is coming sooner, and then we would slowly get drip-fed drip Legends Arceus content as the months went on, but they gave us so much. Like I said with BDSP, there are going to be specific analysis and discussion videos coming soon. These are just some of my initial thoughts based on what stood out to me the most. I think the biggest thing is the confirmation that there can be new Pokemon in a game that does not feature an old, a new region. This is old Sinnoh and it has a new name that off the top of my head, I'm going to take some getting used to. It's essentially that the region that we know as Sinnoh was called something different in ancient times. And in this ancient Sinnoh, there are new forms of old Pokemon as well as new evolutions of previous Pokemon. We saw a new Growlithe form that looks absolutely adorable. We saw a brand new Braviary form, which is amazing. It's a psychic Braviary or a dark Braviary, something to that effect. We saw an evolution for Basculin. We saw an evolution for Stantler. And the way they described it in the trailer is that because of the harsh conditions of this old region, these Pokemon were able to take on new forms, which leads me to speculate that in the newer region, the climate is more temperate, which means these Pokemon don't need these evolutions in order to survive. It's talked about how this evolution for Stantler, Weedier, Weirdier, there's a lot of names, there's a lot of things we gotta get used to. I will get them as we move forward. But it is said that the people who live in this early version of Sinnoh worship this Pokemon and use some of the fur that falls from its beard for clothing and for other supplies. It is deified in this region. It is it is essentially respected just as nature is. And for those of you who have seen some Hayao Miyazaki films, the deer must have reminded you of something. I won't I won't go into detail further than that. But new Pokemon forms can happen and they are. And we've seen that these new Pokemon are going to allow us to ride them. You can fly throughout the region on Braviary. You can run about the region on top of this new Stantler evolution. There are so many just interacting with the world, quality of life, and just 
adventure improvements that we've never had in a Pokemon game before. And it really says a lot about what the open world format can do for future Pokemon games and what it is doing for Legends Arceus. We also get to meet the Professor and some other human characters. We get to learn about what our mission is in completing the Pokedex and helping the Professor understand the ecology of the region and how the Pokemon fit in with this region. We also just saw, and as you saw from my reaction video, screenshots and video of all of these different climates, snowy climates, more autumn climates. It led me to speculate in the video that there is a chance that seasons are returning. And while I would love for that to be true, it could also be that there's just different areas, depending on how close or far you are from Mount Coronet, that have different climates. That could be, it could be as simple as that. My hope my, my prayer is that this is more of a seasonal thing, that as you play through the game and as you experience real world time, the world of Legends Arceus is going to change and adapt with you. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. The other thing that we learned later on in the trailer is that there is some evil, shadowy aura taking over some wild Pokemon in the region, and it is creating boss battles for you to deal with. These Pokemon are larger, they are enraged, they have this dark red glow to their eyes, and they want to fight you and your Pokemon. And you have to be careful, because not only can these Pokemon inflict damage on your Pokemon team, but they can also inflict damage on you, the player. And you can black out and retreat to Jubilife Town, Jubilife Village, I believe it's called, if you get defeated by these Pokemon. You are not immune to these Pokemon. They can attack you, and it's not just these shadow Pokemon which we're going to call them. I'm not sure if we have an official name for them just yet. But normal wild Pokemon can also attack you in the outskirts of this old Sinnoh region. There's footage in the, in the trailer of a Luxio, who is not under the influence of this shadowy effect, also attacking you and attacking your Pokemon. This is a gameplay feature, and this isn't even getting into battles. Battles have a new, uh, a new layer to them where you can choose to use more evasive, defensive moves and different abilities, or you can choose to go for different attacks that can also double up. There is a whole new metagame to be explored in this, and it adds more action-adventure RPG elements to a game that has mostly been a back-and-forth, kind of very turn-based RPG up to this point. There's just so much to talk about. New Pokemon, new gameplay mechanics, a story that seems to connect in a way to modern Pokemon with Team Galactic. This is like the galaxy organization that are trying to pretty much excavate the Sinnoh region and make it habitable for people. There is so much here. There's crafting in this game. You can craft your Pokeballs like you're helping Kurt do in some of the more modern games. And it seems to be a much more in-depth feature. There's so much to do. There is just... There's so much to say about what we've seen from Legends Arceus and from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's going to take so many more videos going into all of these different features and speculating and getting ourselves hyped up. From my perspective, they hit it out of the park with this presents. They showed us that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have features that did not originally exist in the original games. And they showed us that the, the gameplay style, the art style of the game is more polished than what we saw in the originals. I think that's a win. For BDSP. With Legends Arceus, we are seeing the future of Pokemon. We are seeing what Pokemon can be in an open world format, and we are seeing them take risks with the gameplay mechanics in a way that we don't see Game Freak usually do. I think it's an incredibly exciting time to be a Pokemon fan, but I want to know what you guys think. Are you excited for what we saw from this Pokemon Presents? Do you want to see more of a specific feature? And is there something that you're a little concerned about maybe? Maybe you weren't totally excited by what we saw. I would love to know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. It does a ton to show me that you guys want to see more Pokemon discussion videos like this one. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.